Do black holes lose mass in the form of Hawking radiation? Can the mass of uh, can the loss of mass trigger the black hole to become a neutron star? After its mass becomes less than 1.4 solar masses, the Chandra Shekhar limit. So let's talk about the Chandra Shekhar limit. Who was Chandra Shekhar? Why is it called the Chandra Shekhar limit? Who was? Who is it named after? This this physics phenomenon or physics uh, this law of nature, right? Chandra Shekhar. So it's named after Subramaniam Chandrasekhar. Subramaniam Chandrasekhar was the first ever astrophysicist to win a Nobel Prize in physics. Not just the first Indian, in, uh, first ever Indian astrophysicist, but the first astrophysicist from any country to win a Nobel Prize. And it's named after him. And Chandrasekhar was born in well, he was born in Lahore, I think, in the nineteen what twenties or something. Or 1910s, I don't remember which exact uh, year it was. It was during the British occupation of India. And he was from a Tamil Brahmin family. And uh, at the age of 15, he, is, uh, he wrote a physics paper. And by the age of 19, he was on his way to London on an Indian government scholarship. Uh, he, was, he was on his way to Cambridge. And that's where, the, and, uh, and on the journey to Cambridge, on the ship, the ship voyage took about 18 days. And on that voyage, he did some calculations that essentially turned the world of astrophysics around. And he, he discovered that there is a mass, a maximum mass that a neutron star can have. After a, after a star dies, when a star is dying, what is left behind is a neutron star. But only stars of only a certain mass can become a neutron star. Beyond that, the star implodes into something else. Sorry, not, not neutron star, white dwarf. Neutrons were not known at the time. So what is the maximum mass of a star such that it can became, become a white dwarf? So our sun, the sun that we have, is going to be a white dwarf someday in maybe 5 billion years or something. But if it was greater in mass, greater than 1.44 solar masses, then it would not become a white dwarf. It would implode and it would become a, a neutron star, which is now no, known now. But what if its mass is such that it can't even become a neutron star? Then it becomes a black hole. So Chandrasekhar's work was all about what happens to stellar collapse. So what's the eventual fate of stars, of dying stars? Uh, so that's what this was about. And he was a great Indian astrophysicist, but he never worked in India. By the age of 19, he left India because there, was no, there were no opportunities in India. And he had a scholarship. He was brilliant. So he went to London. And in London, his work conflicted with the work of Arthur Eddington, the greatest astrophysicist of that time. Sir Arthur Eddington, right? And Arthur Eddington was kind of a mentor to Chandrasekhar. So Chandrasekhar published his paper, which kind of extended the work of Ralph Fowler, who was his PhD guide, essentially. But uh, Chandrasekhar's work was in, uh, was in conflict with Eddington's work. And Eddington was the greatest astrophysicist of the time. And Eddington believed that, you know, these, these uh, black holes are, are disgusting things. There should be a law of nature that prevents nature from behaving in such manner. And this is what stellar buffoonery and all that. So one day when Chandrasekhar presented his, his paper, his, his research in the Royal Astronomical Society, Eddington ambushed him. And he arranged such that his talk will be right after Chandrasekhar's talk. And Chandrasekhar presented everything properly with all the equations, all the mathematics, all the calculations. And after he was done, Eddington started to talk and he unleashed a brutal verbal assault on Chandrasekhar. The kind of assault you don't do in polite society. He termed what Chandrasekhar was doing stellar buffoonery. And he completely disparaged Chandrasekhar without showing any mathematical proof that Chandrasekhar was wrong. Because Chandrasekhar was never wrong. But he turned Chandrasekhar into, into essentially an outcast. And because of that, Chandrasekhar had to leave England. And he had to go to the United States. And he spent the rest of his life in, 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 uh, st teaching at the University of Chicago. His first job in the US was at Yerkes Observatory. So a great son of India who, who could never be an Indian because there are no opportunities in India. And for, for, for 30 years, he stayed out of the topic of black holes. He stayed away from black holes. That's how traumatized he was by Eddington's assault on him. And eventually, slowly came back into the physics of black holes 20 years after Eddington died. And eventually, Chandrasekhar wrote the greatest book on black holes. And on his 
on his 73rd birthday i think he got the phone call from stockholm we you are awarded the nobel prize so that's the story of subramaniam chandrashekar and uh, so yeah and then to answer rahul's question does a black hole lose mass in the form of hawking radiation yes it does it does but can the loss of mass trigger the black hole to become a neutron star never not possible according to the laws of physics so that's the answer and anyway if you want to understand the story of chandrashekar i would recommend you read my new book called the chandrashekar limit which is available on amazon the links will be in the description i think the link is right now not in the description i'll add it to the description check it out it's a great read and it's it's the story of a great son of india who was one of the greatest physicists of all time he discovered a fundamental law of nature so please check out this this here book the chandrashekar limit which has just come out which i've just released 